please welcome our honored honored guest. Okay, thank you. Wow. <laughs> thank you, Jeffrey. Um, it's kind of like reminding me of my background of um, you know, you know, doing boxing things when I was a kid. <laughs> But it's very nice introduction, and I really like it. Uh, thank you for having me today. I really enjoy uh, speaking with the news ministry. I always enjoy speaking with the jail ministry because again and again, I always say that I can see that the future of the church here in the James ministry. So, you know, if I, if God's allow me to give influence to the James ministry, I would love to do that, and I will do it with all of my heart. So let us bow our head and let us pray. Thank you. Let us pray. Uh, dear Lord, thank you so much for the time here. Thank you for giving me opportunity to uh, share the the message for the you know for such a wonderful people here. And please please be with me uh, whenever I speak or I say it's coming from you. Um, thank you. I pray in your son's Jesus name. Amen. Uh, thank you, TJ, for um you know for uh, giving the Indonesian sermon <laughs> for and I know it's it'll be very um it must be very hard for you to. To do the sermons, you know, in Indonesia, but not only that, you know, thinking the sermon in Indonesia's mind, you know, it's 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 a way way different, you know, when you say something in a in a British way of thinking and com compared to Indonesia way of thinking. But again, I appreciate everything you and Sonia did and that done in the James Ministry, but also as well as um, the Church in Indonesia, and I pray that God will use you both powerfully and uh, can uh, help the James Ministry also to grow according to God's greatness. Amen. Now let me share my screen. Um, wait. Okay. Okay. Um, my sermon is, uh, the title is, I will be your God. In the Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 23c, the Bible said, so they shall be my people and I will be their God. This is the, the theme the church used for the, for the uh, August, you know, for the whole month of August. Now, if you look very carefully in the Bible, the word I will be your God are mentioned 40 times, 43 times in the Bible. Started from Genesis 17 verse 8 to Revelation 21 verse 7. So they shall be my people, and I will be your God. And the word "I will be your God," your, your God, are mentions over and over again for almost forty-three times in the Bible. And then in Revelation chapter twenty-one, verse seven, the Bible said, "He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God." and he shall be my son when i lead the bible discussions in the group in the married ministry there's a lot of question asking about things and especially uh, the, from the bible perspective and there are a questions came and say that talking about the difficulty of people to read the book of, of revelation and I said, yes, it is. It is. It is not easy for us to understand the book of Revelation. And so I uh, started to read the book of Revelation. I bought a couple of books, and then I hope that uh, maybe next month I will be finishing my teaching um, of the book of Revelation. But today I will focus on the beginning of Revelation and the end of Revelation because the Bibles um, consistently talk about I shall be your God and you shall be my people. So the title of my sermon today is Becoming God's People, coming from the word, I will be your God. Let's open our Bible in Revelation chapter 21. In Indonesia, call it Wahyu. Wahyu is from the Arab language. That means revelation. Revelation 21, verse 1 to verse 3. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no more sea i john saw the holy city 
the, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride adorned for her, hus for her husband. And I heard a loud voice come from heaven saying, Look, the tabernacles of God is with them and he will dwell with them. They shall be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. Now what is interesting for me is here, this is the kind of like the end of times and the Bible said about the coming of the new heaven, the new Jerusalem coming down, the new holy city coming down out of heaven. But interestingly see, we see that the Bible does not use the word the temple, but use the word tabernacle. The Bible does not use the temple, but use tabernacles. The secondly, he said that he will dwell with them. God will dwell among his people. This is the, for me, this is the initial design. Why, when John talked about the revelation, the new Jerusalem, I was thinking of the new temple. But the Bible said the new, the, the, the tabernacles. From my perspective, tabernacles is the, is the temple that given or instructed by God to be made by men during the Moses times. All the size, all the, all, all, all the design originally coming from God. So when the Bible said, look, the tabernacles of God is with them, it said that at the end of time, God will come back to his initial design. Tabernacles means God will dwell among people. He will dwell with them. Tabernacles means God will dwell among people. When the Bible said, I will be your God and you shall be my people. In the end of time, that means there is no more physical earth, but, the, but God will live, will dwell among us. And now we can talk to him directly. We can see his glory directly. We can see and reason for many, many questions that we may have in our lives because God is dwelling among his people. The Bible used the word tabernacles instead of the word the temple. It means God wants to go back to his initial design. When we look at the word, the word dwell among his people, Exodus chapter 29, verse 45 to 46, I will dwell among the children of Israel and will be their God. Then they will know that I am the Lord their God who brought them out of the land of Egypt so that I may dwell among them. I am the Lord their God. Over and over again, when the Bible said, I will be your people, that means God will dwell among his people. I will set my tabernacles among you and I shall not abhor you. I will walk among you and I will be your God and you shall be my people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt that you should not be their slaves and I have broken the bars of your yokes and made you walk upright. Leviticus 26, 11 to 12. Again and again when the Bible said I will walk among you, I will dwell among the children, I will set my tabernacle, that means he will be our God and we will be his people. So the verses when, when the Bible talk about God will be our God and we will be his people, his nation. The meaning, there is a meaning inside the, the, the statement that he will dwell among us. And that is his original plan. That is why in Revelation, it doesn't say the temple, but it say tabernacles. This is the original design. When the creations of man, the creation, the, the the creation of the world. God dwell among people. Adam and Eve talk to God directly. 
can reason to God directly. They can see God. They can talk to God. That is God's initial design. That He wants to talk. He wants to be with His people. He wants to be with them. He wants to dwell among His people. That is God's initial design. And so, through the, through the centuries, through the ages of mankind, we can see that men fall to sin. And because of the sin, they are separated from God. But even if they are separated from God, God's initial design, His intention that He want to be, be with His people, He want to dwell with His people. So He created the nation. He called Abraham, He created the nation Israel. And He designed the tabernacle so that He will dwell among His people. Even though the men are wicked, the men are full with sin, but God chose the Israelites so from Israelite they can they, will, they can explain, they can tell, they can be the message from God to the to the whole to the whole world that God wants to dwell among his people. That is the initial design of God. And at the end of time, at the end of time, he will come back to his initial design that he will dwell among us. Can you imagine? He will dwell among us. That is God's initial design. So when when the Bible talk about God want to dwell with us, that means he want to have relationship with, God, with, with us. He want us to be close to him. He want us to know him. Even so many times in the Bible, the New Testament talk about growing in the knowledge, growing in understanding, growing in the knowledge of the right God, of the right understanding about God. God wants us to be close with Him. God wants us to be to know Him. God wants us to us to walk with Him, to have the intimacy. That is God's initial plan. If you look, if you read the book of Genesis, when men fall to sin. The one said, the Bible said, God walks and asks, where are you? It is a very personal, it is a very connection, co connected question. It is a very uh, intimacy question. Say, where are you? The God who is a omnipresent could ask the question, where are you? Even though he knows where is Adam and Eve, but he asks, where are you? It is a very close, very personal question. Because that was his initial plan, to have an intimacy with God. So how to become a God's people is when we have the close relationship with God, the intimacy. To be close with God, to understand Him, to know Him, to walk with Him. That is God's initial plan. See, Matthew chapter 7 21 to 33 when we read sometimes when when we read we are focused on the rejections we are focused on the statement of the people telling what they did when they, when they leave but if you look at the end of the statement from God we can see the rejection not everyone who says to me Lord Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my father who is in heaven many will say to me on the day Lord Lord have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demon in your name, and done many wonderful works in your name? But then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, who you who practice evil. What is evil? Of prophesy in God's name. What is evil of casting out demons in God's name? What is evil of doing wonderful things, wonderful works in God's name? What is evil with that? See, the Bible said what is the most important of life as a Christian, as a disciple, is knowing God and to have relationship with God, to have intimacy with Him. Because in doing so, at the end of times, He will not say, I never knew you, but He will say, well done, my faithful servant. I've been serving God for 23 years, 1999. I start 
Sorry. The only word after all the struggles, after all the hard blows, after all the tears, after all the sacrifices, after all the things that, that I may do for God, the only word that I want to hear from Him is well done, my faithful servant. And just hearing that very same word, it will wipe out tears. It will cleanse everything. It will, it will be a, a, a joyful time, a rejoice. A jo I must. I don't know how 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 to express that. It will be a very, very moment that I am looking for. I hope we are looking for. When the Bible said, when God said to us, "Well done." my faithful servant but well done my faithful servant cannot be healed unless we have a relationship with God because he knew us he we walk with him not how much how many things we do in our life as a Christian as a leader as a minister as a pastor God does not count that unless we have the relationship with him You know, sometimes it's very sad that many people, maybe us as well, you know, we have the Bible. We have our times. We have so many things in our life. But to build relationship with God is the very last thing that we want to do in our life. We are focusing on what the world could promise us. We are focusing on what the acknowledgement coming from the world, but not the acknowledgement that we will receive. After all, that means after the, after the, after the time. By having a relationship with God, just by take your time to pray, take your time to digging the Bible to understand Him. It is a the beginning of the of our step to go for the eternity you know how many things that that relationship could protect your mind your heart your life your actions your behavior from doing things that against his will but just by just taking a very simple things in our life to pray to him to read his word to do to willing to do his will in our uh, to, to, in our life you know that is the very basic things in christianity but sometimes it will be the last thing maybe things that we will do after we do everything in our life and we remember to do that so how can we become god's people we are his people if we walk with him you are his people we are his people if you if we walk with him point number one you are his, you are his people if you walk with him the second things let's continue read revelation 21 verse 4 to verse 7 god shall wipe uh, wipe away all tears from their eyes there shall be no more death neither shall there be any more sorrow nor crying nor pain for the former things has have passed away he who was seated in on the throne said look i am making all things new then he said to me to, to john write for these words are faithful right for this word are faithful and true and he said to me it is done I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give you the offsprings of the water of life to him who thirst. And verse 7, he said, He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. 
This is the very beautiful things about the Bible. Revelation chapter 21 verse 7. He talk about God wants to be our God. He wants to be the God for those who be faithful for him. But he said, he who overcomes, and I and God will be his God. But the most personal thing that really touched my heart, and he said, he changed from being their God, a singular God, a singular, you know, not, a, a, sorry, plural, many people's God, to become my son, my daughter. So can you see the seed thing? From the beginning, I will be your God. I will be their God. That means people. By the end of times, become very, very personal. He said, you will, I will be your God. And you will be my son and my, my daughter. That is very, you know, it's very touched my heart. Because it, look, look at God did. Design. Look how beauty the Bible is. Look how good God's intention is. From you are my people, they shall be my people, to become a personal. You yourself, as a person, will be my son and my daughter. Can you see? But then, the, the, but then the Bible said that he who overcome. You know, life is full of struggles. None of us, when we become a disciples, we become Superman or Supergirl. We are as sinful as we are before, as we were. We will be. We will face the same struggles, perhaps in the last intention but still we, we may have the very same struggles we will overcome it overcome it after we overcome one struggles then perhaps there's there will be more struggles to come and then again and again and again but the bible said that he who overcome shall inherit all things at the beginning john or God gave illustrations of the, of the wedding, of a man and woman and the wedding day. Wedding or marriage is a covenant. So when someone got married, both of them, they will make an oath. They, they will declare an oath, say that I will be faithful. But none of them, none of them have an idea or having a doubt that perhaps my husband or my wife will not be faithful. When, the, when husband and wife declare that they want to be, a, to be united in a, in, a, in a marriage, in their mind is they will, be, they will be faithful to one another. But the truth is, you know, 90% of the marriage come up to unfaithfulness. Not in the disciples, I hope. Imagine when we become a disciples. It is also our covenant with God that we want to be faithful to God, but God will always be faithful to us. To us. But the truth is, we know that we will be all we will having struggles. The truth is, we may fall. We will be defeated by sin. We will be fall. And that's the Bible saying over and over again, talking about the struggles. Struggles is okay. Struggles is not wrong. But the Bible said, He who overcome shall inherit all things. And I will be his God. And he shall be my son and my daughter. How can we become God's people if we overcome the struggles that he faces in, in our life? Point number two, to overcome. We can only become his son and his daughter if we overcome the struggles that we have in our life see john chapter 2 first john chapter 2 14 
B to 17. I've written to you, young man, because you are strong. And the word of God lives in you. And you have overcome the evil one. He said, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, and the love, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is the, of the world. The world and its desires are passing away, but the one who does the will of God lives forever. We shall overcome. And the struggles that we have, if we could make a conclusion to all the struggles, and John gave a conclusion of all the struggles coming to three, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Then the struggles. And I know we can, you know, dig in the Bible and to see what is the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. We could study it up. But this is me, the three main things of the struggles of the people, especially for, 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 for you as a young man, as a young person, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. But this is very, you know, this is very amazing about the book of Revelation. If you look, if you read the book, the Revelation chapter 2 to chapter 3, you can find the very same word though, the, written like, He who overcome shall receive this and that, this and that. So these are the seven struggles. And perhaps from three, it will divide it to become seven. Ephesians, the, the struggle of the church in Ephesians, in Ephesus, they, they abandoned their first love. The joy, the excitement of living as a disciples, the excitement of understanding God, the excitement of experiencing God's forgiveness, the joy, the hope, the faith that, that we may have at the beginning. And the church of if Ephesus had them at the head at the beginning, but then suddenly started to fade away, and they started to abandon their first love. The struggles to abandon their first love is, you know, is is real for those who become a disciple for maybe twenty to thirty years. How can you still have the the excitement when you read the Bible after twenty years, thirty years you become a disciples? How can you be? That excitement, the very same excitement when you pray to God, when you meet, when you help others to become a disciples, when you meet with, 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 with the brothers and sisters, can you have the very same excitement? But if you overcome, you have a, you, the reward is you have a permission to eat the tree of life. The church in Smyrna, they are poor, they are persecuted. But then when they overcome that, God said, you will, they, they will receive the crown of life and there is no second death. The church in Pergamon, they have a struggle of money oriented. Everything talk about money. And the Bible used the Bileam as an example. Impurity practices sexuals in the church and the wrong teaching. There's the struggles in the church in Pergamon. But the Bible said if they overcome, they will eat the hidden manna and their name were written in the tablet, in the white tablet. The church in Tiatira, they are compromised, they are wrong doctrine and the wicked leaders. And the leadership they 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 bring the church to go to, to fall to sin. But if they overcome, God said, I will give them authority over the nation. The church in Sardis, they are look spiritual. They are look alive from the outside, but from the inside, they are actually dead. And God said, I never found the work is perfected. That means they never complete things that they started. 
There were the struggles. But those who have overcome the struggles, the reward is they will be clothed in, with white garments and acknowledged in the book of life. The church in Philadelphia, they are weak spiritually, but then they keep faithful. Those who are overcome, even if you are weak spiritually, even you are weak, you are have a struggles in, in, in your spirituality. But if you stay faithful, if you overcome, the Bible says your name will be written in the name of God and in the name of the city of God. Can you imagine? That's how important your name is written in the name of God and in the name of the city of God. They say it like Laodicea. They are rich. Even there is a written on the ancient writing say that there is an earthquake, earthquake in Laodicea and they rejected the, the aid from other city because they said, no, 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 we have a lot of money to rebuild our, our city. They are rich. They are lack of nothing. But they are lukewarm. This is the struggles for those who are maybe have everything. You don't need anything because you have everything. Whatever you want, it will be, it will be provided or you have, already, you have it already. And that means you are lack of nothing. You don't need others. You don't need others' advices because you know all the things. You know all the knowledge. You, just, you basically do not need anybody. But the struggles, no one could challenge you. No one could tell you what is right, what is wrong. No one could see and spot the things that you might be wrong. And you become look for. And if you overcome the struggles, the Bible said, you will be seated in on God's throne. I all I, I enjoy sharing about my my life because you know whatever that I have today, it has connected connections to what I have overcome before. Now, it, as I said to you in many, many times, I grew up in a very simple family and I live in the military base in Indonesia, not in America, in Indonesia. That means you only have, you only have, when I was a kid, you have only one bedroom. Well, all the children, I have nine siblings. So we are all nine. So eight siblings will be nine. So all of nine living in one room, one bedroom. Okay, my mother, my so 11 of us. I even have two brothers who passed away. So 13 of us live in one living room. Okay, and and uh, the wall is made of bamboo. So when someone talks at the, uh, at the, uh, uh, beside us, you can hear. So can you imagine that's, that's the life that I have when I was kind of like until my fourth year at my elementary school. So you talk about nine years or 11 years old. And then we move to other uh, place, but the same is a military base as well. But this time is more, more better, but much, much better. But the kitchen is located around somewhere around uh, 100 meters from our home. So we have to walk 100 meters. So in the kitchen and the bathroom, and then everything is 100 meters. So, oh. yes. Sorry, uh, there's a background music coming from your mic, I think. Oh, sorry, sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Thank you. Wait, 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 I have a um, surface, sorry, 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 okay, can you hear me clearly? Oh, good, thank you. Thank you. I think the the other Zoom meeting will be on my left side. <laughs> thank you, thank you for telling, for, for telling me. And so, how can you expect someone grow up in that situations to have a you know, to have a achievement in their life. Because we are, you know, we do bad things, you know, when we were kids, like we fight each other, we we, we didn't go to school, we, we um, you know, all the naughty things as a young boy living in the our military base. What I'm trying to say, what I'm saying, what I'm trying, want to share is here. I, I, I had a very bad in English. I, I, 
I didn't know. I got. I only got an English only on my middle high school and in my high school, and then I went to university. But how can I? How can I speak English fluent? Because when I was in university, um, all the textbook is in English. So I have to understand because if I can read in English, I will be ahead of my other siblings at the university, my friend at the university. And so I started to read the textbook in English and out of, out of all the texts, I maybe understand only maybe 1%. I could not understand anything. So I write the word to, trans to translate. So one pages equal to one pages of the um, of the paper of the word that I did not know. So I keep on doing that for almost a year, and then suddenly my focus in growing, and I started to remind to, re to remember many many words, and then I start to work on my grammar, and I start to work and I start to work on my my English. I could go and find scholarship in Australia. Because of that, because of I have to struggle myself. I have to make an every effort. I have to, I have to do everything, and so I can get that scholarship. See, we we may come in a different situation. Maybe many of you coming from the thing that you can be provided by your parents. Or maybe you grew up in the country that you can speak English. That's why when TJ came to Indonesia, he said, how, how come? He's Indian, but he can speak English in fluent, fluently. Because, <laughs> just kidding, because he grew up in, in, in England. But, but for us who are unlucky, how can we achieve that? Because you have to overcome things in your life. I have to overcome many things in my life for me to be able to become what I have today. Of course, by God's will, God's grace, you know, everything that we do is also by God's grace. If I can achieve that, if I can overcome in this world, in the world, can I do that in a spiritual, in a spiritual life? You can be a number one in, in your study. You can graduate from Cum Laude, Magma, maybe Summa, Summa, Magma Cum Laude. You can achieve, you can be number one at, at school, at work, at office, at business, you can do whatever. But the question is, can you do that in your spiritual life? You can be a self-motivated person whenever talk about the job, the work, the business. But can you be the self-motivated person in spiritual life as well? You can be someone who excited doing things. You do things with your heart whenever you want to do. But can you do that when you talk about in your spiritual life? Because the Bible said, he who overcome will receive what God had promises. But not only that, God will call him and call her his son and his daughter. Romans chapter 8, 35 to 37. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations or distress or persecutions or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written, as it is written. For your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who love us so brothers and sisters you are more than conquerors you are more than overcomers you are god's son because you are overcomes many things in your life we may lose in the battle we may struggle in the battles in our spiritual battles we may lose defeated in our battles but we will win the war we will win the war as a disciples as a christians as God's children, as God's son and God's daughter, we will overcome because we are not just a conqueror, 
but we are more than conquerors. And that is the idea that we need to invent in our heart, in our mind, that I may lose in the battle, but I will win the war because I am more than the conquerors. Brothers and sisters, two things for us to become God's people. When you walk with Him closely, so that you will become His people. When you become the winners of all the struggles, and so that you will become His child, His son, His daughter, His child. I pray that all of us today will have your time to walk with God closely and to win of many struggles in your life. By doing so, God will be your God and we will be His people, not only His people, but personally His son and His daughter. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Let's bow our head and pray. Dear God, thank you so much. Thank you for giving me such a wonderful Bible. The book of Revelation. Even though sometimes people will say it is hard to understand. But then from the pattern that we can see from you, you are the very same God at the beginning until the end of time. Your intention is that we will be with you. We, you will dwell among us and that we will become your God. We will become your people. But in this life, God, you know that we will face struggles. We will fall to sin. We will come, we will be weak, perhaps spiritual. We will be defeated in the battle. But we know that we we are more than conquerors, so we will win the war as a disciples, so that we will become not only your people, but personally, your son and daughter. Thank you for such a wonderful Bible that you give in our life. I pray that we will love your word even more and more, and we grow in understanding of you. I pray. In your son's Jesus' name. Amen.